Hello students, a warm welcome to all of you. In this module, we are going to discuss 15th chapter in our CBSC curriculum of grade 10. Of course, that is the last chapter in the textbook, that is probability. And what is the importance of this probability according to our board examination point of view? And of course, what is the physical significance of this concept called probability? See, probability um, is widely used in several fields and every single day to day life, we use probability everywhere. Knowingly or unknowingly, we definitely use probability. And uh, coming to the waiters of this topic, of course, you can expect more marks from this chapter and it is very easy to score marks, good marks, I would say, from the topic called probability. So what do you mean by probability? What do you mean by probability? See, probability means simply possibility. So possibility that you need to measure it. So simply what is the possibility? For example, you are going to write an exam, right? Without any preparation, you cannot expect more number of marks, right? See, what is the possibility? Suppose if you uh, select some important topics and whose weight is, is more, then so you might expect that you may, uh, uh, you know, like I can get 40 marks or 50 marks um, to get pass in examination. And moreover, uh, like coming to some experimental probabilities, like experimental probabilities are nothing but it has to be done, right? Not simply a theoretical probability. Experimental probability means, for example, you have a coin, unbiased coin. And when you toss the coin, then you can expect the outcomes like it might give head, otherwise head, uh, otherwise tails. Or else if you have a four-sided die, otherwise if you have a six-sided die, when you are rolling on the die, rolling the die, then you can expect the possibilities that which number comes on the top, right? So these are uh, kind of experimental probabilities. So what basically probability means? What is the classic definition for probability? So everybody knows that probability means it's a chance. But chance, according to mathematical language, what do you mean by chance? But we need to measure the chance. So when you can measure the chance, then that measuring chance is said to be probability. So probability means simply measuring a chance is said to be probability, as simple as that. If you can measure the chance, then only it comes under probability. Otherwise, it is just a chance. Hope you understand. And uh, you know about the classic definition of probability. What is the classic definition of probability? Probability of getting an event is equal to the number of favorable outcomes divided by total number of outcomes. You already learned even in grade 9 also, right? See, with the help of that formula, we can measure the chance of getting an event, right? So that measuring a chance, measuring a chance is said to be a probability, okay? So let us try to recall what are all the things that we already learned in the concept called probability in previous years? See, when you observe this, what are all we are going to discuss? And of course, some known things and known facts are also there. In this concept called probability, we have experimental probability as well as theoretical probability. So in this concept called experimental probability, experimental probability, like as we discussed, when you are tossing a coin, otherwise rolling a dice, otherwise from a deck of cards, 52 cards, when you are selecting one card randomly, what could be this card? So all these events come under experimental probability. So in this experimental probability, so we uh, generally discuss all these things and the theoretical probability or classical probability, we already discussed this. See, what do you mean by some very, very important things here that sure event. What do you mean by a sure event? What do you mean by a sure event? Sure event is nothing but it has to happen. A certain event. A certain event. So what kind of events are called certain events? It has to be done compulsorily. It has to be done compulsorily. See, for example, 
uh, when you have like a book a mathematics book for example and uh, suppose according to uh, you know weightage of according to the weightage of the topic in our board examination for example this is what the probability that we are going to discuss so as per the cbse guidelines at least one four marks problem will come from this chapter called probability so if you see the board paper then definitely you can find one problem definitely from the chapter called probability so that is what called sure event it will happen definitely it will happen definitely see for example uh, if i say <clears throat> i am tossing a coin when i am tossing a coin i would say it gives either heads otherwise tails suppose if i say surely it will give head then it is not a sure event because we cannot exactly say that it gives tails otherwise it gives heads all the time it might give head otherwise might give tails so that kind of events are not called sure event sure event or certain event means it has to happen you understand right so and equally likely outcomes this is what we just discussed equally likely outcomes are nothing but when you are tossing a coin otherwise when you are rolling a dice otherwise when you are uh, picking one card randomly then when you are picking one card randomly then the probability of picking one card randomly is either it can be one or it can be two or it can be three or it can be a kings so that there is equal number of chances of getting every single object or every single item so those kind of events are said to be equally likely outcomes those equally likely outcomes will happen in such events right and uh, coming to the event we already discussed event is nothing but then experiment is happening that is what called event for example dropping when you are uh, rolling a dice so rolling a dice is an event and when you are tossing a coin tossing a coin is an event so an event is happening then you can identify outcomes they are possible outcomes as well as the total number of outcomes right so that is what called event and a random experiment when you are experimenting so randomly it is happening randomly it is happening is nothing but you are not fixing something to be happened so it happens randomly right and uh, coming to for example sample space what do you mean by sample space when i am rolling a dice when i am rolling a dice then my outcomes are going to be either 1 otherwise 2 otherwise 3 otherwise 4 otherwise 5 otherwise 6 so any one of the numbers will come on the top face of the dice so all these numbers come under sample space for example when i am when i am tossing a coin when i am tossing a coin i might get head otherwise tails so that sample space is going to be heads or tails this is what called sample space so sample space means what are all the possible outcomes the collection of all possible outcomes otherwise the set of all possible outcomes is called a sample space okay so these are favorable outcomes are nothing but my favorable outcome when i am tossing a coin maybe head otherwise maybe tails so they are favorable outcomes so these are all the things we are going to study every single time in the concept called probability and in this probability we discuss about a few things so these are all the points that you will have to remember so what are the points here probability is the quantitative measure of likelihood of occurrence of an event a measure measure of chance so when you can measure the chance quantitative measure is nothing but this probability has to happen this much this is what the number is the probability of my event so that is what called quantitative measure okay and what is the classical definition of probability probability of getting an event e is equal to number of outcomes favorable to e or number of favorable outcomes to e divided by total number of outcomes is called probability of getting an event see here you need to remember very very important thing here that probability always lie between 0 and 1 it can be 0 or it can be 1 see what do you mean by when probability is equal to 0 and what do you mean by when probability is equal to 1 so when the probability of getting an event is equal to 0 for example 
I am rolling a dice. Okay. When I am rolling a dice, then what are my possible outcomes? I am not talking about favorable outcomes. What are my possible outcomes? It could be either 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6. Suppose, if I choose a number 7, what is the probability of getting a 7 when I am rolling a dice of 6 sides? Will I get number 7 on any face? I will never get because there is no 7 on any one of the faces of the faces of the dice. So, Choosing an event which will never happen is said to be the probability which will never happen. So that is what called impossible event. That is what called impossible event. So the probability of getting an impossible event should always be zero. Why should always be zero? Because it will never happen. So when it will never happen, then we can measure it as zero probability. So that is why if any event will never happen then that event is said to be impossible event and probability of getting an impossible event is supposed to be zero right and what do you mean by this one just now we discussed about this one it surely happen it surely happen then the probability is going to be one so that is why probability of getting an event always lie between zero and one and it can be zero as well as it can be one also but probability of getting an event with the help of this and of course, we already discussed probability will never be less than zero and will never be more than one. So probability of getting an event is always between zero and one along with zero as well as one. Please do remember all these points and see here. Probability of getting an event equal to zero, then it is called as an impossible event. And probability of getting an event is equal to one, then it is said to be sure event or certain event. Sure event or certain event it has to happen that's it and if e is an event not happening not happening is said to be complementary event okay not happening in the sense for example probability of getting an event if probability of getting an event is equal to some 0 0.5 then what is the probability of not getting an event? Probability of not getting an event is going to be 1 minus 0 0.5. So 1 minus 0 0.5 is also equal to of course 0 0.5. So that is what P of E bar is said to be complementary event. That is what you are given. See, probability of getting an event plus probability of not getting an event is equal to 1. So from this you can say probability of not getting an event equal to 1 minus probability of getting an event. And probability of an event is never negative that's what we already discussed because it never be less than zero it never be more than one and what do you mean by sample space the collection of all possible outcomes is said to be a sample space so this is what the concept we keep discussing and we keep remaining again and again in the concept called probability and so let us have a few events that we are going to discuss here so what are those few events first event is tossing a coin otherwise tossing coins so here one of the very interesting fact is that see when you are tossing a single coin when you are tossing a single coin then what are the possible outcomes the outcomes are either heads otherwise tails so there are total number of outcomes equal to two when you are tossing a single coin when you are tossing two coins simultaneously, when you are tossing two coins simultaneously, so this is the first coin and this is the second coin. Okay, I have two coins in my hands. Then I am tossing a coin. The first coin, suppose the first coin is showing heads. And again I am tossing the second coin. Second coin might show head otherwise tails. For example, I am fixing this first coin as head and the second coin I am tossing. Then first time I got heads and second time when I am tossing it might show tails but not all the time heads only so with the help of these heads I am getting two possibilities similarly my first coin showed tail so for this tail also I am getting two possibilities so that heads 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 tails tails heads tails tails so there are totally four possibilities when I am tossing two coins simultaneously see when I am tossing one coin, these are my possibilities. And when I am tossing two coins, these are my possibilities. When I am tossing three coins, in the same way, I get these possibilities. And when I am tossing four coins, these are the possibilities. 
but if i would say one very important thing that you need to understand here so that very important thing is for example when i am tossing two coins or when i am tossing one coin first tossing number of coins see here this is number of coins and total number of outcomes total number of outcomes so when i am tossing one coin and when i am tossing two coins we already just discussed about this suppose if i toss only one coin then the number of outcomes is equal to 2 they are heads and tails when i am tossing two coins what are the number of possible days there are four possible days what are those four heads and heads heads and tails tails and heads tails and tails so there are totally four possible days when i am tossing three coins i get number of possible days equal to 8 when i am tossing four coins when i am tossing five coins when i am tossing six coins when i am tossing n coins what about the number of possible days we can easily identify the relationship between the number of coins that you are tossing as well as the number of outcomes total number of outcomes see here a coin has two faces a coin has two faces with the help of that only information i am going to understand what is the total number of possible days see this 2 can be written as 2 to the power of 1 and 4 can be written as 2 square and 8 can be written as 2 cube and 4 when i am tossing four coins the number of possible days equal to 2 power 4 and similarly when i am tossing n coins the number of possible days is equal to 2 to the power of n as simple as that if i am tossing n coins if i am tossing n coins the total number of possible days or the total number of outcomes is good is going to be 2 to the power of n but please do remember here what is this 2 here 2 is going to be number of favorable outcomes number of favorable outcomes whole to the power of n this is what is only the standardized and general formula in order to find the number of outcomes when you are tossing number of coins right so when you are tossing one coin you get 2 power 1 possibilities when you are tossing two coins the number of possibilities is 2 square when you are tossing n coins the number of possibilities is equal to 2 to the power of n please do remember this and after that we have uh, already discussed about coins and then i am going to discuss i am going to explain you about what it is dice and you know about dice they are four sided dice as well as six sided dice so four sided dice are tetrahedrons So when you are tossing a four-sided die, each side is numbered one, two, three, four. So there are totally four possible outcomes. See, there are four possible outcomes. This is four-sided dies. But when you are when you have a six-sided die, then the possibilities are one, two, three, four, five, six because there are six faces. Okay. So when you are toss when you are rolling the dice, then you might get one on the face on the top face otherwise two otherwise three otherwise four otherwise five otherwise six see here also the same thing when you are rolling a single die when you are rolling a single die what are the favorable outcomes here the favorable outcomes are going to be 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 so the total number of favorable outcomes are going to be 6 because you are rolling a single die but when you are rolling two dice when you are rolling two dice then what are the possibilities and how do you estimate these possibilities see it is very simple that i can under i can explain you by using a simple example taking a die see here uh, the dice are like you are having two dice okay so i am taking the dice first die so dice 1 and uh, second one is dice 2 okay here for the first die the numbers are 1 2 3 4 5 6 for the second dice the numbers are 1 2 3 4 5 6 got it now i am rolling both the dice when i am rolling the first die it is showing 1 but when i am rolling the second die it might show 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 it means the total number of possibilities with this number 1 are 6 so that 1 comma 
may come when you are rolling both the dice r1 comma 2 r1 comma 3 r1 comma 4 r1 comma 5 r1 comma 6 similarly when you are rolling the second die suppose it is showing 2 and same possibility same number of possible possibilities with the second dice also understand so like that these are 6 and these are 6 6 multiplied by 6 is going to be 36 possible possible outcomes will be there okay so there are totally 36 possible outcomes here 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 4 comma 4 5 comma 5 6 comma 6 that is what exactly uh, given here in this if you want to observe 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 sorry 1 comma 3 1 comma 4 1 comma 5 1 comma 6 right so with the help of this we can understand a lot of things when you study about rolling two dice simultaneously right uh here i would like to tell you one very important thing that when you are tossing a coin twice when you are tossing a single coin twice otherwise when you are tossing two coins at a time the outcomes will be recorded same i repeat when you are tossing a single coin twice when you are tossing a single coin twice otherwise when you are tossing two coins at a time then the outcomes will be recorded as same and simultaneously when you are rolling a single die when you are rolling a single die twice otherwise when you are rolling two dice at a time the outcomes will be recorded as same hope you understand the concept right so this is about the number of uh, you know the total number of outcomes and here itself you can understand one thing that what are the possible outcomes how many number of possible outcomes will be there when you are rolling a single die or when you are rolling two dice see here number of dice and total number of outcomes total number of outcomes so when you are rolling a single die if there is a single die then what are the possibilities 1 2 3 4 5 6 so there are totally six possibilities when you are rolling two dice simultaneously then what are the possibilities possibilities are going to be 36 when you are rolling three dice simultaneously what about the total number of possibilities now you can understand it clearly see here 6 can be written as 6 to the power of 1 36 can be written as 6 square why am i writing it as 6 power 1 6 square as like we uh derived one explicative formula for the number of outcomes when you are rolling the number of coins it is same as like the number of outcomes when you are rolling dice see every single die has six faces because we are talking about six sided die so that here six is nothing but total number of outcomes total number of outcomes sold to the power of 1 here total number of outcomes sold to the power of 2 so when you are rolling three dice then it would be 6 to the power of 3 when you are rolling n dice then the total outcomes are going to be 6 to the power of n so this is about explicit formula for the total number of outcomes when you are rolling n number of dice right okay so moving on to very important concept and very interesting of course that is called deck of cards so in this set of a deck of cards we have total number of cards is equal to 52 so out of this 52 cards of course there is one more card is there that is called joker but it will not be considered as one part of your set of cards so there are totally 52 cards these 52 cards are divided into four colors two red it's not four colors two colors so two colors are again divided into two different with two different symbols what are those two different symbols so one is with the hearts and one is with the diamonds one is with hearts and one is with diamonds and uh, other two will be in black in color so one is spade this is spade and this is what called clubs spade as well as clubs so totally 52 cards will be divided into four parts so 52 divided by 4 is equal to how much 13 so there are each 13 cards belong to this category belong to this category belong to this category belong to this category but here if you want to know how many number of red colored cards are there red cards so red cards are nothing but the cards will not be red in color red cards means the symbol on the card will be red in color so they are 
13 plus 13 is equal to 26 and the remaining 26 will be black in color right so the total number of cards with heart symbol is equal to 13 with the diamond symbol is equal to 13 with the spade symbol is equal to 13 with club symbol is equal to 13 see here red color cards are 26 and black color cards are 26 and again hearts are 13 diamonds are 13 spades are 13 as well as clubs are 13 and what are those cards now see here the cards are absolutely given here this is one set of clubs so like that we have heart color cards as well as spades as well as uh, you know diamonds and all and when you observe here this is what one set of clubs and you can identify what kind of cards will be there in set of cards see here the first number card will not be with number one will be with the a that is called ace card a c e so ace card is nothing but number one card that is but number one will not be appeared on the card so instead of number one a will be appeared and next second that is 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 till 10 you can see the numbers on the cards okay so what are numbered cards number cards are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 out of that a will not be there okay so from 2 to 10 only numbered cards and what about the other cards j q k j stands for jack j a c k and q stands for queen and k stands for king see j after 10 what is the number so the number would be 11 so j means 11 and q means 12 and k means 13 so that is why there are totally 13 cards but here we need to understand very very important thing that j q k appear with the faces on the card see here there is a face and there is a face and there is a face that is why these three cards are said to be face cards in one set of cards there are totally out of 13 cards there are totally three face cards so if there are three face cards total number of face cards in deck of 52 cards is equal to how much so 3 into 4 is equal to 12 face cards so please do remember all these points are very very important in order to solve problems given in this concept called probability right see here face card is equal to like there are four kings and four queens as four jacks so four threes are 12 there are face cards and uh, see here numbered cards are like uh, you know four aces four aces are there and what are the numbers two three four five six seven eight nine ten what are those there are totally nine so nine into four is equal to 36 are numbered cards and moreover four cards are ace cards because here one yes, here one yes, here one yes, here one yes. Understand? How many red colored A's are there? One and two. So there are two red colored A's as well as there are two black colored A's. So this is about playing cards, deck of cards. Of course, we can have very interesting problems depending on playing cards as well as interesting problems on tossing coins as well as interesting problems on rolling dice also. So... In the coming module, we are going to discuss about few set of problems which were given in previous board examinations. Of course, they are really interesting to solve. Hope you understand. Enjoy the class. Thank you.